Waffle House, an American institution. I would say that uh, my hero is my father, definitely my father. Uh, he was a man's man, and he could uh, he could do anything. He wasn't afraid of nothing. It didn't matter. I never seen him in pain at all. I was probably about, uh, I don't know, seven years old. And uh, he walked in the front door with a bad limp. He had got hurt. He was uh, coaching some kids soccer team and he fell and uh, he got hurt and he uh, tore the ligaments in his leg. And I didn't know. I didn't know what was going on. That's the only time I've ever seen him in pain. It was pretty, pretty sad. Well, we're here to get our day started, man. It's Sunday, it's 3.11, and we are at Sphinx. And we gotta get fuel, man. We gotta get fueled up for the week. And uh, I'm just gonna get a sandwich out of here, cause, uh, I got a lot of filming to do today. I'm actually leaving a, an hour earlier than normal so I can try to get some stuff filmed. And um, I'm just gonna grab a couple of cold sandwiches in here. Nothing nothing extravagant. There is a Burger King attached to this establishment. But no way, buddy, am I gonna mess with that. Wow, well, that hurts. Well, it's the July 4th weekend. Everybody's uh, grabbing ice. Filling up their coolers. This guy's testing his girlfriend out. So we're gonna walk in here and just try to get a couple of drinks, a couple of sandwiches, something. Thank you. Appreciate that very much. They got over here. Okay. They got some cold sandwiches over here somewhere. Maybe not. Well, we got these two sandwiches. I got a uh, turkey and cheese sandwich and a chicken salad. Man, the markup at stuff like that, man, is crazy, man. It's just, uh, but if I went to Burger King, it'd have been more money and plus, my stomach would be like a volcano. It would erupt later, <laughs> later on tonight. So I brought me a couple of little bags of chips too, man, in my uh, in my lunchbox. I think I got uh, like some ruffles and some Doritos. So yeah, man, I just didn't have time to make a sandwich at the house. I just trying to get stuff done. All right, let's eat this. Get down the road. Get to work. Got a lot going on. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, wow. Large bowl grits. That is a large bowl of grits. <laughs> thank you. I was kind of thrown in the truck in, in a kind of weird way. Uh, it wasn't something that I just uh, said, hey, I'm going to be a truck driver. I was uh, uh, young. I was newly married. And, uh, you know, I, I got tired of working nickel and dime jobs, working construction. Um, and uh, my then father-in-law asked me about, uh, about trucking. He said, you have a CDL? I said, yeah. And uh, he worked at a concrete company. And uh, he put in a good word in for me to, uh, to get a job there. Do that, and I was uh, I was fortunate that happened. And if it wasn't for him, 
and probably never would have drove a truck. And that was in uh, 95. That was in 95, so it's, it's been that way ever since. tell it's July 4th weekend because all the dummies are out today man oh my god people cannot drive they cannot drive man I, there was a I was getting ready to jump off the exit here and sometimes you just have to do that man when you get behind a bunch of stupid drivers you just have to if there's a rest area or like right now a truck stop somewhere you can just jump off for a few minutes and kind of reset you know what I mean? Because uh, there was a guy, he was in the left lane, the fast lane, and he's going and he puts on the brakes. He goes and puts on the brakes. And there, the guy behind him is like, dude, what are you doing? You know? Then he, uh, the crazy guy, he comes over and gets in front of me, puts on the brakes, goes, puts on the brakes. I said, oh, man. I said, thank the Lord, this truck stop is the next exit. So that's what I did jumped off and let let them dummies get down the road a little ways hopefully we don't catch back up to them but uh we got to get fuel uh of course nobody fueled the truck uh over the weekend so we got to get fuel and then we're gonna we probably go inside and get something to drink need to hit one of those on my windshield but it's not too bad right now ah shit I have to go ahead and use the facilities while I'm here. Take care of everything at one stop. Your one stop shop. Love. One thing I love about coming to a truck stop, especially Love's, is all these cool doodads, man. You can come, I can be in there, I could spend all kind of money in here. This is, I love all this tech stuff. I'm a sucker for all this stuff, man. It is really cool. That's my, uh, charging cable I got wow thirty dollars I didn't pay that much for it man they've raised the prices on this stuff and stuff like this man these uh your smartphone holders I get mine from uh Walmart actually this looks just like it it looks 
like it. Well, very similar to what I got. I get mine from Walmart. They're about the same price. I don't think that's quite the same brand, but it's it's important to have a really good smartphone holder, especially if you're shooting videos, you know. I got a couple of these. Well, down here, these right here. Yeah, these are 30 bucks, man, but they're good. But you can't, you can only have, do the forward facing camera. You can't do the rear camera because it's blocked up from the device. You need to get me a cowboy hat, man. <laughs> old school trucking right there, boy. Old school trucking. Let's see how much their sandwiches are here. At Sphinx, I paid $4.99 for uh, a cold cut sandwich. They're going to the other side. See how much they are here. Four seventy nine. Not much difference. I sure would like to get a big old Gatorade. I got a couple of small ones in my lunchbox, but I like to get a big, real super king size. You know what I'm saying? Here we go. Damn. Holy smokes, man. Two for six. Three for seven. You'd be better off getting the two. I think that's what I'll do. All right, we got it. Two Gatorades, and I went ahead and got another chicken salad sandwich. Man, I'm I'm kind of hungry. I I'm embarrassed to say that, but those little sandwiches I got at Spanx earlier, man, them things are about gone. They were there was nothing to them, man. It was like just having four pieces of bread. There was nothing to them. <sighs> anyway, yeah, you're better off just getting the two Gatorades for six bucks that's come out better doing that so hell I'm telling you boy heck yeah I'll do that man guess we'll get ready to get back on the road get on down to the Grand Strand I that mine good lord whoo man where's my let me have my keys so I can <laughs> start this truck. This is crazy, man. I'd hate to see what it's like out on the West Coast. I don't know, man. The humidity here is what makes it so bad. Turn that up. Woo! The cashier said, uh, I said, that's a good deal on them two Gatorades for $6. She said, yeah, but at least you in a nice, cool vehicle you get to ride in all day, don't you? I said, yeah. I said, it, the air works good in this truck. <laughs> but, uh, so I just dropped like 11 bucks for uh, these two drinks and another sandwich. I got to put the seatbelt on my, uh, my cross on the briefcase here in the passenger seat. If I don't. All right, man. There you go. What's this called? Glacier Freeze. Glacier Freeze. <laughs> I haven't had this flavor in a long time. Wow, that's good and cold. Excellent. And another chicken salad sandwich. The way I like how they package theirs, you just take that that seal off right there good to go once you get this off good luck trying to get it back on <laughs> but anyway all right I'm gonna go ahead and munch on this I'm gonna get down the road and we're doing good on time it's uh 750 we're doing good just kind of keep rolling talk to you soon There's no way that autonomous trucks are going to take over real soon. There's just no way. You got to have the human element involved. Too many accidents, too much high risk. 
I'm not saying it won't never happen, but not right now. There's no way. We made it here, folks. We finally got to our destination point. I've already hooked to this trailer. The trailer I dropped is sitting right here, just out of the frame. So I'm gonna let you see what I do when I come down here to this facility. I want to move this out of the way, put it over there, and put mine in its place. Ease this out. I'm pretty sure I gotta, pretty sure I got to uh, put fuel in this trailer. Nice and easy. Straighten it up, straighten it up, follow it up. It's nice, man. All right, just a little bit more. A little bit. And you don't want to slam against the dock either. You want it to be nice and easy if you can. Nice and easy. We don't want to tear nothing up out here. There we go, just like that. And we're gonna nudge it up right there. I always wanna nudge it up a little. You don't want no space between the dock and the trailer. Somebody can slip, fall down. You know, that's, ugh, that'd be bad. All right, now I'm gonna take this seal and we're gonna place it on the back of the handle here just for a little added protection. Because, uh, like I said, these handles, they, when you go down the road, that thing will flop and it'll, <laughs> it'll come out of the little socket thing there and that door will roll up before you know it. Whew. Man, it feels good in here. They got the air on. Be a good time for some ice cream. It's, all, it's almost empty. Almost empty. Everybody's favorite snack machine. Stocked up. Uh oh, he's out of uh, some chips. What was that on that far side there? That was a. Uh... Oh man. Can't remember now. Some kind of chips. Uh, oh well. I already got my Gatorade from the truck stop. So we don't need none of that right now. I got a big super king size, like I said. And uh, my God, it feels good in here. It, it's amazing that how humid it can be at this, at this time of night down here. It's just incredible. But, uh, well, let me go. Let me, uh, I don't think, what's his name's here? I can't get no bills. Oh, well, I can just email them or whatever it's locked yep yeah you want to be sure that you do everything like you're supposed to when you come to a delivery point like this and you're the only one here because uh you know you don't need no trouble well let me rephrase that i don't need no trouble so uh, just just do your job man you know I don't think I'd still be here if uh, there was some kind of issue. Oh yeah. All right, let's get ready to go lock this gate. We got a scoot. Wow. I thought that car was gonna run right into the back of my trailer. <laughs> I was, I'm sitting here with my four ways on, stopped. And I kept looking in my mirror and I was like, is that, is that a vehicle gonna stop? Ah, oh, man. There's almost a wreck right here. And it would have been their fault. Look at this. So I gotta, I gotta uh, block the gate. So yeah, that was uh, wow. That would have been ugly, ugly, ugly. <laughs> Let me uh, set you right here for a second. People down here on the street, man, they just they don't pay attention. And it's not hardly no traffic at this time of night that I that I ever deal with. So that's a fortunate thing. But the people that do, and I'm sitting out here like this, 
I couldn't tell you how many times <laughs> I've questioned. I was like, are they, are they going to stop? I mean, oh, well, people aren't used to seeing a truck sitting right here, I guess, this time of night. But people do deliver freight in the middle of the night, folks. Come on. Got to cut us a little bit of slack. <sighs> That's it. That's it. Now we got to make the drive back. Man. I hate when that truck cuts off like that. It only idles for a couple of minutes. I got the idle time cut down so much on these trucks. Okay, it's time to roll. Let's go. Yeah, here we are, man. The uh, good old truck stop toward the end of our shift. And uh, this is the second time we fueled up on this driving shift here. Well, it won't take much to top these off, but hey, man. Always good to do a walk around of everything. Plus, it feels good to stretch the legs a little bit. Man, I'm tired. Damn. It's been a long night. Oh, man. Fuel. Um, diesel. What is it here? I don't know. I forgot. Yeah. 333. Not bad as I thought it was. This is going to probably take a few minutes. Just a few minutes. That tank is bone dry. Here we go. Eh, it wasn't, wasn't as empty as I thought. These are 50 gallon tanks. So it was. It wasn't as bone dry as I thought. It's close enough, though. <sighs> Let me uh, put these gloves up. it's not as hot as it was it's still there's a little bit of humidity in the air just just a touch but it's not like it was but still it's still kind of sticky out there all right let's get out of here there's my second Gatorade from earlier today time to roll look at that windshield Ugh. Well, here we are. Oh my gosh, man. Yes.
Oh man, look at that, right in the way. Product placement, right? <laughs> now I just feel like having some water, man. Uh, just put a little dash of pepper on here. I need to try the broccoli and cheese. There's no way I'm going to eat all this. I just, you know, it's just the way you have to fix it. I might eat half of it. Like I said, it, it don't matter because my wife does not eat broccoli and cheese. All right, so here we go. This is this is my lunch for today. Let's see what we got. Again, this is just a brown gravy, as you can see. Mmm. It's delicious, man. Mac and cheese is awesome. Mashed potatoes with a little gravy. Ah, delicious. Let's try the, I feel like this is a food channel now. Let's try the broccoli and cheese. Tastes great to me, man. I've never been a real picky eater. Uh, not really. There's very few things that I don't like. And there are some things I've never tried that I just, I just, this seems nasty to me. One of those is sushi. I've never had sushi and I never will. My son was like that for the longest time. And he said he tried it and he loved it. Him and his wife have it all the time. I remember I got my first credit card from the bank. I think it was, was it Nations Bank? I remember going in there for, I can't remember if I was going in there to open an account. I think that's what it was. God, it was, I was in my early 20s. And uh, I talked to the lady. She's like, would you like to apply for our credit card? I think, I think it was Visa or whatever. I said, sure, why not? I think the limit was like 1,500 bucks or something. Never had a credit card before. And I went and burned that thing up. My wife at the time, I remember getting home and I said, you want to go to Best Buy? <laughs> She's like, what? Went to Best Buy, left there and went to Walmart. <laughs> All the big things you do when you live in the South. And I said, F this credit card and I didn't pay it. There you go. Young and dumb. Man, that was stupid. Then I got another credit card somewhere else. It wasn't a lot of money. I think the limit was like $500. Interest rate was out the freaking roof. Burnt that up. Didn't pay it. Then I, um, I was getting in some really financial troubled waters. Again, this is in my 20s all the way up to my early 30s and uh you know we was having some marriage problems and without getting too deep into that and uh she wouldn't work and uh it would always cause an argument so i, I ended up going to get loans how stupid is this i went and got loans to pay off like the taxes property taxes paid some bills so now you create more bills on you but you just keep piling it on. I was in such a bad hole, man, I couldn't get out. And um, so I just concentrated on the main things, the house payment, the land payment, the car payments, water bill, power bill, all the major things. And I walked away from a lot of stuff. Then I got divorced and all, just everything just piled on at one time. and. It was a hard time in my life, man. Being in a stressful marriage and dealing with that all the time, man, that is not healthy at all. And I dealt with that stuff for about four or five years toward the end. You know, it just, it just didn't work. You know, things changed. So then I had to really, really work on getting my credit straightened out. And man, that took a long time. That house and land went and gets me. In the uh, in the divorce, 
without getting into the legal details of that, it was supposed to be taken care of on the other party's end with the payments and it wasn't come back on me and it was just a mess. It was just a mess. So, you know, they say it takes seven years for something to fall off your credit, right? That house and that land, they held that against me for 10 years against my credit. All the other stuff finally fell off. For years, man, now I couldn't get stuff. You know, if I wanted to get something financed, I had to go to places for people like me that had bad credit. The good, the bad, and the ugly of trucking. Uh, wow, that's a good one. Uh, I would say the good is, is the money. You can make decent money truck driving. I mean, you really can. You can make some decent money. You just got to get with the right place. Uh, if you don't have uh, any experience, of course, you got to go to CDL school and, and probably get on with a mega carrier. And, you know, uh, but as you get more experience, you know, you should make more money. Then you can maybe go to a uh, another company, maybe like a private fleet or something. And um, I'd say the bad is being away from your family, uh, especially if you're uh, gone for weeks at a time, which is, uh, uh, thankfully, I don't have to do that. Uh, I'm home every night, and I'm pretty much a regional and local kind of deal, but I still uh, have the same issues that any other truck driver would have. You know, I have to, I have the, all the same responsibilities. I have to deal with all the idiots out here and everything else. Being away from home, you know, is, is one of the things. If, if you're used to kind of being alone and, you know, you don't lose your mind, you know, then it's okay. I mean, it's, uh, that's actually what I love about trucking because I'm by myself and I've had jobs where, you know, I've worked under the watchful eye of a supervisor or a manager or whatever and, you know it just, I just didn't like that some people love it some people love working in a cubicle in a big office that's fine this is my office and I get to see a lot of cool things all the time and uh, a lot of scary things you see both ends of the spectrum I've seen some horrible things out here in the blink of an eye I've seen a fatality happen and it's just it's horrible it's horrible it's life is so precious that's something else you know out here that's on the bad side is, is uh, the risk of something going wrong is very very high and it's against you all the odds are against you yeah, so you have to battle that every time you drive you take a trip that's something you have to you know take into consideration for me the ugly side of, of trucking is when you break down and uh, that's nobody likes that and I'm probably the world's worst when I talk about that because I can't stand that because especially like right now it's it's uh, in the middle of summer it's hot you know and if God forbid if something happens you're going to burn up and on the other end of the spectrum if it's really really cold and something happens you don't have no heat so there are those issues there that are always looming in the background and uh, you know, so that's why it's good to do a pre-trip and um, make sure you get your your truck in for PM on you know, scheduled uh, service. Uh, and you know, but things are going to happen. That's just unavoidable. But really, all you can do is just keep the fingers crossed, man, and hope for the best, and just. You know, try to be patient out here which is for me is really hard I'm not a patient person but because you deal with so many crazy people out here and uh, you have to be professional somebody comes cuts in front of you they flip you off they're blowing the horn you just have to let them go you know it's a uh, it's okay man it's 
it's what I love to do as far as this job. The good part is you're able to move around, you're, uh, you're seeing different things every day, uh, you interact with people. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, you're not stuck in the office and you're not, you know, you're always seeing different scenery. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's the good part. The bad part is, is people don't really observe the truck. Uh, they're, they think that, you know, they're the only ones out here on the road. Uh, they try not to, uh, try to cut you off and stuff like that. Uh, you know, and they uh, try to, you know, they think they gotta be first at everything. Now the ugly part is, you see, these trucks right here, now that's got the DEF and all that, it's like a time bomb. I mean, you see them out on the road now where they're just in flames or burning to the ground. Uh, I mean, that's the, that's the ugly part of it. All right, Mike, tell me what inspired you to start driving a truck. I had grew up around trucking with two old old friends of mine. They daddy would drive. That what inspired me to drive. Okay. How long have you been driving trucks? Since old seven. Since old seven. What in your opinion is the good, the bad, and the ugly of trucking? Well the good is when you do your safety and stuff, you know, make sure everything's safe on your truck and everything. But the bad is when you get out there, when driver, car driver, uh, end driver, truck drivers too, or what you call a uh, wheel holder. So therefore you gotta be safe with that. You know, you got bad and good days. Other part of the truck is uh, when you're stuck out there, you ain't got no load to uh, come back home. Yeah, one thing, man, I know that that a lot of people want to define success is on a quite a, quite a few different ways. Some people thinking that if you get a winning lottery ticket or a scratch off or whatever, that's some type of success. And I guess in a way, I guess it is. But to me, success is very simple. Number one, if you have your health, all right, and if you can make your payments, you can pay your bills, you can go to the doctor when you need to, you can make your copay. If you have to have a surgery and you have decent insurance that can cover what you're going through, if you have a job uh, and you can take care of things financially, it doesn't, you don't have to live in a mansion. I think that uh, if you're happy, I think that's being successful.